Good evening. I'd like to call this August 25th, 2014 uh, Board of Education meeting for the Forest Hills School Board to order. Uh, Mr. Tepfer, if you please take roll. Mrs. Bissinger? Here. <coughs> Dr. Heiss? Here. Mr. Hemmelgarn? Here. Mr. Smith? Here. Mr. Fruman? Here. Jo please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, the indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The safety exits we have one here, uh, one all the way in the back, and then the two to my left, to your right, here in the front of the building. Can I have a motion to adopt the agenda, please? So moved. Second. Second. Mr. Tepfer? Mrs. Bissinger? Yes. Dr. Heiss? Yes. Mr. Hemmelgarn? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Fruman? Yes. Um, item 3, approval of minutes, 3.1, approval of the special meeting of July 14th, 2014. So moved. Second. Mr. Tepfer? Mr. Smith? Yes. Dr. Heiss? Yes. Mrs. Bissinger? Yes. Mr. Hemmelgarn? Yes. Mr. Fruman? Yes. 3.2, approval of the uh, meeting of July 21st, 2014. <coughs> so moved. Second. Mr. Tepfer? Dr. Heiss? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Bissinger? Yes. Mr. Hemmelgarn? Yes. Mr. Fruman? Yes. And correspondence, uh, Dr. Jackson? Yes, uh, Board of Education, and um, what I I'd like a couple things to kind of give quick updates and correspondence. The first correspondence I'd uh, just like to share with you, um, the um, Cincy Magazine came out, the uh, latest issue, the September <coughs> issue, and it actually shares that uh, both Anderson and Turpin were named in the top 10 best high schools in Southwest Ohio, and a great article about that and, and, so, and the criteria in the magazine, so we're very pleased with that. So congratulations to both our fine high schools. Um, another piece of correspondence that I just received, uh, although the, the news is a little old, but it changes all the time, so I thought I'd just give a quick update. Uh, House Bill 487, which was recently established as the requirements for high school, earning a high school diploma, the new requirements. Uh, just to share a couple uh, key points from this piece of legislation is this will be the last year that the 10th grade Ohio graduation test will be given. Um, beginning with this year's freshman class, they will have new requirements for graduation. Uh, of which a uh, number of courses that they need to take, but as well as um, end of the course examinations. Uh, there will be at least seven end of the course examinations um, for the, the students, and uh, they will need to score a certain number of points on those, and those point total added together uh, to, which we don't know what the point total is yet, but, <laughs> but, uh, but with that, uh, I just want to say, and then I feel sad for our software, sophomores this year, it's going to be a very busy year for them because not only do they have to take the OGTs, but they will also have to take these pretty high stake end of the course test beginning this year as well. So I wanted to share that, that uh, we did get some more information from that. And I want to thank our curriculum department, especially Natasha and Brad, for keeping me informed and, and staying on top of all these things. And, and again, it's always a moving target. And uh, Brad and I had a meeting today to talk about these uh, changes and and how we're going to address these so thank you um, moving on I'd like to put a plug in for our Head Start program we have a Head Start program that will be um, uh, this year uh, up and running at Mercer Elementary um, we are in the process of enrolling preschoolers in that program so any preschoolers uh, please come to our central office here uh, at uh, particular qualifications and go online for the qualifications am I right Betsy thank you see I knew I'd mess mm -hmm. that up thank you all right, so uh, all contact and, uh, and requirements are online that they can take a look at. And um, the um, um, last year I was, was the first year that uh, a small group of schools in Southwest Ohio did the quality profile. And, uh, and our Forest Hills quality pro profile is another way of communicating with our community, the great school systems that we have, that we go far and beyond what some of the state requirements uh, share. Um, and I am pleased to say that our quality profile will be coming out here in early September. Uh, actually, the release date is September 15th. And the reason I bring that is because that quality profile is caught on across the state. And there are literally dozens and dozens and dozens of schools all the way from the Cleveland area to, again, the Ohio River that will be provi pro providing to their communities 
the same document, the quality profile, with their data in there. So we're really pleased with that. So I believe that's our updates for this month. Uh, other than the fact that this is uh, the second week of school already, uh, we uh, had three days of school with our students last week, and uh, this is our fourth day today. Thank you. Mr. Tepfer? No. As many of you know, this is uh, not a public meeting, but it's a meeting held in public. We nevertheless welcome your comments. If any of you care to address the board, please uh, fill out a green card at the front of the room and we will address you at the appropriate time during the meeting. And always the most wonderful time of all of our meetings, we have a candidate for graduation, Mr. Broadwater. <clears throat> Good evening. It is my distinct pleasure to uh, introduce the following student who has completed all requirements for a diploma from Anderson High School. And that is Jordan Jeffrey Williams. Jordan, uh, Jordan has informed me he is moving on to the Marine Corps after this. And uh, so we, we congratulate him on that and we thank him for his, for his service to our country. So I recommend a motion to approve the granting of a high school diploma to Jordan Williams. I move that we grant a diploma to Jordan Williams. Second. Mr. Tepfer? Mrs. Bissinger? Yes. Mr. Helmgarn? Yes. Dr. Heiss? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Fruman? Yes. We're on the gong. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> you are welcome. Um, just, um, you know, occasionally we do have a graduate uh, that comes through and, and um, just want to thank both of our high schools and our entire program here at Forest Hills for, for helping these students. Uh, Jordan was just a couple credits short. Uh, we were able to provide some uh, alternative op opportunities for him to, to get those credits and just was just this close to graduating with the class, but here we are just a few weeks later. and. And so it's really exciting to see that, so thank you. Uh, public comments. Do we have any green cards? No, anybody? Thank you. Uh, item 7.1. This, uh, district updates, facilities updates, Dr. Yeah, Jackson. I'd like to give a quick update regarding where we are with our facilities. Um, first of all, there's a couple things that are occurring uh, as we speak, actually. Uh, I've asked all of our building principals to begin setting up uh, <coughs> some committee groups in their buildings to, as I said in our opening day address, to take our planning stages from the 10,000 foot level to like the 5,000 foot level. Uh, we know primarily what our facilities are going to cost us to upgrade and to, uh, to renovate and to new. Uh, now it's just kind of looking at, okay, um, what's the next step? And that's to prepare of what does those classrooms look like? We know the cost pretty much, but um, what, what, what are they going to look like? And, and uh, how are we going to, are there things that we've not um, necessarily uh, gotten into? Some of the minor details uh, that we'll begin to do that. The second thing that uh, will be going out probably at the end of this week, if not the very first part of next week, is going to be a survey to all of our staff. And that survey uh, will entail some of the same types of questions. I have a, uh, just a couple of them here. But basically, it's how do we, as teachers and educators and administrators and others in our district, how do we, uh, what's our vision for the four hills and learning, and how does that all transpire, pire, transpire mm -hmm. back into facilities um, and, um, and, and making this the very best place for students and, uh, and our staff. So that's kind of our quick facilities update. We have a bond. Uh, issue committee that's been up and, and going and meeting and they're doing some great work uh, and beginning to spread the message of our of our uh, facilities efforts in the community. Thank great. you. Thank you. Uh, curriculum update. Ms. Adams? You guys have this handout at your place. We are working this year on answering um, two guiding questions and one is kind of related to what Dr. Jackson was just speaking of. What is the future vision of innovative learning in Forest Hills? Although we've been very progressive in the use of technology and, and we've always had the, the vision of success for all students, we haven't really taken the time 
um, to, to sit down and really define what that means for, for now and for the future because of, of all of the changes. And so we started that work last year as an administrative team. Now we're going to expand that work out to other stakeholders, including the teachers, students, and parents, so that we can put in writing some, some of that definition and how we see the future of, of learning kind of playing out in Forest Hills. So that will be a big part of our year. And then the second thing is a question that's meant to help students develop and own their own learning with um, higher standards that are coming through through the Ohio's new learning standards and with the assessments that are coming. Um, we really want to work to empower the students to really <coughs> to know what the learning is to be all, all about, know what the direction is, and being able to kind of measure themselves along the way. And uh, sometimes students can take a passive role. And we want to, we want to shift that so they're taking a much more active role. To do this, it's going to take a lot of collaboration. And we, we worked diligently last year and, and have started this year in developing collaborative structures instead of our district. The district leadership team, we have building leadership teams, and teacher-based teams that are working together to define what we need to teach, how we need to change and deliver instruction differently, what that means for how students are evaluated and how they're measured, as well as how teachers are measured, because all those things are kind of changing. And we know that we won't figure this out sitting in our offices or staying in our silos and our own buildings, that it really takes a full-on district collaborative effort. And so that's what we're committed to doing. So to go a little bit deeper, we'll go to the second page. Um, we'll, we'll be following an instructional design process. And we've, been, we've followed this over the last couple years and um, have gotten English language arts well underway. And what we'll be doing is implementing our literacy framework. So this is strategic decisions that we've made about how we want English language arts to be delivered in our school district. And the key implementation feature this year will be the writing process. And so that will be something emphasized from handwriting in the, in the, the very lower grades all the way up into crafting essays and different kinds of writing um, to, the, to the seniors. And so that will be a, a concerted district effort. Um, additionally, we're going to be working on the math course of study this school year. It's time to t uh, evaluate the courses that we offer, the path in which we lay out for them. And as you know, we, we um, chose the integrated path. And so we want to make sure that that's cohesive, um, K-12, in, in our instruction and our delivery. We'll be working on mathematical practices that go along with it in, in terms of the shifts of instruction that have to take place. <coughs> and it'll give us a chance to look at our gifted program. Um, we want to zero in on what's working well and where, what areas can we improve, because that's the area where we, we serve um, directly. We're going to be in a probably year four or five, technically it might be a little bit longer, of, of the RTI implementation, which is the response to intervention, which details our multiple tiers of instruction and intervention that we're able to offer our students. And um, as we're fo focusing on reading and writing and math, we'll continue to improve and expand our interventions and enrichments that we can offer students to give them the support that they need when they need it in each of our buildings. And we're working really hard to make sure that um, this is happening across the district in the same manner with the same um, fidelity. As you know, we're expanding our digital learning opportunities. Also, that will be a focus this year as we're being able to provide more technology in the elementary grades three through six on a day-to-day -day basis. And we're continuing to expand in, in 7 through 12 so that we can offer more authentic learning opportunities for our students. And finally, and this is going to be a big part, and this is a, back to the moving target Dr. Jackson is speaking of, um, in the use of data, in the use of new assessments, in the use of um, creating assessments, taking new kinds of assessments, online assessments, there's a whole litany of things that we're going to be taking on as a school system this year to understand how um, the state is going to measure the success of our students. And so we've learned a lot. We keep paying attention to changes and things that, that are underway, and we'll be bringing our staff along and offering practice for our students so that they are um, best prepared for, for the next generation assessments that are coming our way in the spring. And finally, just to wrap up, we are going to, I'm going to read this line. This is something that's it's really important to us to, to emphasize throughout our organization. And that is um, developing a growth mindset. Students who embrace growth mindsets, which is the belief that they can learn more or become smarter if they work hard and persevere, may learn more, learn it more quickly, and view challenges and failures as opportunities to improve their learning and skills. 
And that is something in this age of assessment, in this age of um, ranking and ordering and looking at, at being kind of obsessed with data, we want to make sure that we are setting measurable goals for students, that we're, we're doing a balanced approach, the students feel good about themselves and that they can continue to dream big and not be defined by some of these data points that are coming and that, that we really are focusing on the whole child and instilling that kind of belief in, in each, each person as we, as we bring these new um, changes to our curriculum. So that's just a brief overview. We'll be coming back um, next month to kind of give you a data picture of where we are in the district and talk more specifically about our quality profile. Um, so are there any questions? We've got uh, a bill in Columbus and mm -hmm. possibly some changes coming we just don't know yet. Yes. How will that impact what you're doing? It'll impact us greatly from, from one but just like the state of mind, like your, your mental state of we're, we're gearing up to do these, get, get these changes going and then it just to change on a dime is very unsettling to us. In terms of our practice, we've been very strategic in anything we're doing with English language arts or math to be about the instruction that we want to see happen in Forest Hills. So I wouldn't say that all of our work is going to be thrown out the door. I also wouldn't say that it's um, not going to affect us at all. Um, we, we're trying to just make the best decisions about what's, what should be happening in our classrooms, what, what is best for students. We try to stay on that path, stay as close to the line of following the requirements as possible, but doing what we believe is important in Forest Hills. And so all of the professional development we have planned this year will be carried out and we'll, we'll mm -hmm. make classrooms better, we'll make teachers better, just no matter what happens in, in the legislature. But it is, I mean, we pay attention to it every day. We're getting updates and um, it, it's very unsettling. And to not know, you know, we always, we plan with the end in mind. That's kind of our focus. We're always kind of shooting for what is that end product? Where do we want to see things? And when you don't really know the end, the end keeps changing, it makes all the steps in between, like you can wear yourself out wondering if you're doing the right steps or the wrong steps. And so it, it, it's, it's an energy suck, really, in, in, in many, many ways. Since you mentioned design process, I, I want to applaud the effort that you're putting into this because using something like a, uh, a design process where you've got the outcome in mind before you begin and you set up the process to deliver the outcome, mm -hmm. that's best practice work. That, that's like MBA uh, training and uh, that's you, you get the most efficient response that way. It's more work, mm -hmm. but I, I said it's the right thing to do and I'm really pleased to see that that's what's happening in our school district. Well, and I do want to applaud the teachers because one of the, that's probably been true in our district for a long time where teachers individually are planning with the end in mind and now we're asking teachers <coughs> to kind of come together as an organization, as a group of teachers. So it allows us to kind of maximize the strengths of this district, but it does make the, pro it, can, it makes it more complicated sometimes. Um, but what we feel is that it might be a slower process, but we get a much better product by by pulling all the strengths of our teachers and, and getting their input and not just making decisions um, in, at a central office level, that they're, they're deeply involved in this process. And so we're proud of that. Anything else? Other questions? Thank you so okay. very much, Natasha. Sure. Uh, item 8.1, board discussion. Well, I have one item. Um, Many of you are, well, gosh, not just many, I can't imagine not all of you aren't familiar with the ALS challenge. I will tell you I am not particularly adept at social media and, and I actually wish I didn't have a Facebook page right now. <laughs> <coughs> um, Dr. Forrest Heist did the board the great pleasure of, of challenging the board as a whole as he had water dumped over his head uh, by his children and I think his dog too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and rumor has it that Natasha Adams did the board the great pleasure of, of challenging us, although I have yet to see that. Um, and somebody told me Miss Peggy Johnson also did the same. Yeah, he knows your wife. <laughs> <laughs> Which is sure you got the <laughs> always the best way to, to get to me is through my wife. Um, so I have not had water poured, poured over my head yet. Uh, Tony knowing that we were coming here this morning and knowing that it was going to be an item of discussion, uh, sent us the video of his getting dumped before he came here. Now, I actually haven't seen that either because I can't figure out how to open it. But he tells me that's what it is. <laughs> what I have is my check. 
And I downloaded the form and filled it out because I don't even know how to donate, on, uh, donate online. I have the envelope and I have the step, stamp. Three challenges, $300. Oh, okay. so, so that'll be going in. Now, more challenges does not necessarily mean more <laughs> dollars. And, and I'm fortunate that this isn't live because I'll make a, a suggestion. Um, if anybody cares to dump water on my head after the meeting tonight, after executive session, I think it'll be about 1 a.m. before we get out of here. <laughs> At least. I'm more than happy to have, have that water dumped on my head as long as I get the opportunity to set my iPad aside so it doesn't get ruined. Um, so just be here at 1 o'clock when we're finished and, and you can do that. <laughs> Um, and then for the rest of the board, I know Tony did his part, and I know Forrest started this whole process. So Randy, Julie? <laughs> 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 you found out about it. Well, I think you have 24 hours. That's the way I understand it. <laughs> I'm game. <laughs> Other board discussion? I say we may have some ice here, actually. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Jackson. <laughs> If no other board discussion, uh, item 9.1, a foreign exchange student. Ms. Ryan? The administration of Anderson High School is requesting board approval for Benedetta Sardini, a uh, foreign exchange student for the school year 2014 and 15. Benedetta is from Italy. She'll be a student at Anderson High School. Ayusa International Exchange is sponsoring her and all information has been received and reviewed for her. The superintendent is recommending the board approve the enrollment of Benedetta Sardini at Anderson High School and authorize the waiver of instructional and school fees for her. We're doing uh, items 9.1 through 13.2 as consent agenda items. Thank you. Uh, item 10.1, uh, supplemental books. Ms. Adams. The superintendent recommends that the board approve the supplemental book for grades 10 through 11 history. It's the destiny of the Republic. And as our practice, it will be on review in central office until August 25th, um, mm -hmm. or, or sorry. It'll start being on review so it can be voted on for the next, um, the next board meeting. One thing I want to point out is that the, you're going to start seeing more and more text says that I, that I keep bringing forward because the, the standards not only apply for English language arts to the English language arts teachers, but also to science and social studies. So as teachers are finding great resources, they're bringing more and more forward. So this will be a continued practice. Um, we also have a 10.1 the, uh, for the love and relationship. Love and relationship. Oh, I don't is have it? that on my paper. When we were all at um, paper okay, copies. Yeah. Secret Sorry, I must have an old version. Yes. This, okay, this is the motion to approve the supplemental books for grades 12, Love and Relationship. Um, we presented this last um, month and it's been on review. It's The Secret Life of Bees and The Lonely Bones. So we recommend that you approve these supplemental books for grade 12. Great, thank you. Sorry about that. Thank you. The Human Resources Report. Ms. <coughs> <coughs> Carnahan. Yeah, bulletin. Um, we all have updated copies of this. And it's um, also online, the correct uh, version. So um, item 11.1, uh, item A would be retirement. Item B, we see uh, resignation of administra administrators, teaching staff, and non-teaching <coughs> staff. Item C, we do have one um, leave of absence. Um, item D is an unpaid leave of absence. Item E is a bus monitor salary schedule for the 1415 through 1617 school year, and you do have an exhibit for that. Item F is a job description for the administrative assistant to the superintendent. Uh, that's also an exhibit. Item G is a change of salary from 13. 14. So this is a corrective action uh, from an inappropriate placement on the salary schedule last year. Um, item H, a change of salary for 1415. 
Item I, these are changes of assignment. And this occurs uh, rather regular, regularly each year as uh, people are moved, um, shifted in order to meet the needs of our students. Item J uh, and K, appointments. And uh, we have a number of appointments. You had the opportunity this evening to meet many of those, um, uh, many of our new staff, administrators, certified staff. Uh, we also have classified staff on here. It goes through page five. Moving on to item L. These are special services appointments. And this is for extended school year um, for the summer of 2014. Item M, special services appointments uh, for the 14-15 school year. And again, this is a couple of pages. We go to item N at the top of page eight. And uh, these are the appointments of our coaches and advisors. This is also an exhibit and you see a number of, um, there's maybe three pages of coaches and advisors. Mm. We're very fortunate that our folks um, are our teachers and our staff love to be um, coaches and advisors and, and make those great relationships and connections with kids. Item O, we see substitute personnel. Item P, a memorandum of understanding with our Forest Hills Teachers Association. And there are a couple of items on here, but I do want to bring attention to the supplemental salary schedule. Um, we started working on this back in the winter. Um, took a look at many, many, many districts in the Cincinnati area. Um, really kind of narrowed it down to looking at um, our peer districts in the ECC. Those tended to be the districts that were most similar to us. And we tried to make sure that the supplemental salary schedule was uh, very competitive and also driven by the needs of our kids. So what our, what our building principals, what our teachers were telling us, these are the things that kids want to be a part of. And so, you know, obviously that's very important. Um, this is the first time this has been done in a really long time. Um, so, I mean, there are some folks here who've worked really hard on it. Uh, Rick was a part of that. John Vandermeer, I'm not sure, Mike Broadwater. Oh, there's John back there. Um, and a lot of folks, and then our Teachers Association, really have to, to thank them for this, um, being so collaborative and working with us. So we think this is a great, a great thing for our, um, for our teachers and more importantly for our kids. <laughs> Item Q is an MOU with our OPC-177 and 273 groups. And there, again, this is an exhibit uh, item. And again, this resolved two or three issues that um, really were for the benefit of both, both their organization as well, well as our organization. So we want to uh, shout out to them, too, and say thanks for their um, collaboration and work. Um, and the, the staff FTE for the 14-15 school year at this time uh, stands at 777.84. Um, and that uh, does represent the change from the 13-14 school year to the 14-15 school year, with the exception of bus drivers. We're still working out um, to make sure that, you know, where we are with our bus drivers. Um, several of those were just hired, you know, very recently, and we, we just want to make sure we give you accurate information. So the superintendent recommends board approval for item 11.1. Thank you, Ms. Carnahan. Uh, item 12.1, the authorization to uh, issuance of a request for qualifications. Mr. Johnson. Yes, before you use a motion uh, to allow me to take all the necessary <clears throat> steps for the issuance of a request for qualifications for professional design services for the construction of a new Wilson and the building renovations related to the passage of the no November 4th bond <clears throat> issue. So the treasurer recommends the board approve the, rec uh, the request to issue the request for qualifications. Thank you. Any questions? No. Um, item 12.2, the, the bus stops, Mr. Johnson. Uh, it's one of our favorite things to do every year. <clears throat> it's, uh, the treasurer recommends the board approve the bus stops as well as the authority to designate or relocate subsequent <clears throat> school bus stops be delegated by the board to the superintendent or designee and a list of the uh, recommended bus stops for the 2014-15 school year is attached. Is there a place we can pick up the packet of them? <clears throat> yes. Okay. And we've actually reduced it down to about nine pages front and back. Front and back, very nice. Yeah. It's a legacy thing, so yeah. I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, item 12.3, transportation agreement with Marymount City Schools. Uh, we, we've worked out a great <clears throat> relationship with uh, Marymount Schools, uh, the Treasurer recommends the board approve the agreement 
with Marymount City School District to provide shuttle services for the Forest Hill <coughs> School District students attending Scarlet Oaks Joint Vocational Center in Sharonville for the 2014-15 school year. Now, what I might add is our drivers take students, <coughs> our students to Marymount. They board a bus there where there's also, I believe, Indian Hill students board the bus and they take one bus up to Sharonville. So <coughs> it causes a little bit less time on the bus for our kids and it's a straight shot there for them. So elsewise right. they're going to Milford and picking up a shuttle there and having to get there quite a bit earlier. Thank you. And then uh, item 13.1, the meter investment management agreement, Mr. Tepfer. Yeah, we've been um, <coughs> researching uh, possible partnerships for investment <coughs> management for, for uh, quite a while. Um, found the, uh, the folks at meter to be um, really meeting all of our um, strategic plans with regard to investments. Um, it's a company out of um, Columbus that's had a lot of success there and wanting to get in this market. Uh, so obviously we were able to get um, great rates um, for their services. Um, obviously, and I've contacted uh, some of the schools there. area, Dublin, Hilliard, mm -hmm. Upper Arlington, Shaker Heights, Mentor, a lot of great um, uh, results there over the last few years. Um, so we felt comfortable moving <coughs> forward with them. Uh, we put together a kind of a business plan over the next um, three to five years, which is where um, <coughs> I'll steal what Natasha said earlier, we're looking for a growth mindset. So it um, can only go up uh, from where we are, but obviously that's where the growth is in that three to five year. That's where the yield curve is, and that's where we believe uh, we'll be able to um, increase our earnings. I believe the fees that we pay will come back several times in, in interest earnings. Um, and obviously we'll report that um, mm. as, as it happens. So. Uh, recommending the board approve the uh, meter investment management agreement and that is shown in the agenda we have had legal look at that and um, you know, a couple changes were made to uh, the cleanup language to make it comfortable for us item 13.2 um, <coughs> 13.2 a our donations uh, for the month of July statement of board accounts we have three accounts that we're waiting for some funds to come our way um, C D and E show our receipts and expenditures um, it's early in the year so um, it's hard to really look at those numbers and, and gain much but but we are tracking those um, as we go um, on a month by month basis uh, I do plan with um, with those in mind to bring a revised five-year forecast in September or latest October uh, to kind of pull everything together that we've done so far I think we'll be able to at that point be able to then formally hook up with meter and, and do our our cash flow forecasting from that um, but it's positive obviously after the way we ended the year last year um, and item um, F we have the bank reconciliation G our investment list of investments and H um, no change in our general fund appropriations but we have large increase as we received mm -hmm. notice of the auxiliary service and federal program funding levels were communicated so that's what the increase in those appropriations are. Um, item um, I, our board service fund expenses. Item J, our, our transfer. Um, this is usually just the transfer of FY14 to <coughs> FY15 auxiliary services, but we do have um, a transfer to fund the, the self-insured workers' comp fund um, that we do on an as-needed basis. It's time to, to make that transfer, so that's what um, also included in item J. Um, in, in item K, we have a list of the uh, appointment of the cashiers for those that mm. handle mm. district funds um, planned throughout the year. Um, it is uh, recommended the board approve uh, all items presented by our whole team, 9.1 to 13.2 as presented. So moved. Second. Discussion? Um, I have a question on the request for mm. proposal for the work for Wilson and the other buildings. <coughs> Once they come in, what process do you have in place, or what do you have in place yet? Now, there's a very detailed format as far as legal what we go through. <coughs> we'll get those in. It's pretty easy to reduce the number. I think last time, four or five years when we went through this, we received like 20. It's pretty easy to get down to seven or eight. Last time we received 10 or 11, and we got down to five or six pretty easily. 
uh, what the hope is is that the September board meeting will come back with a list of three. I'm not allowed to talk money, fees, or anything. Uh, but we'll go through a screening process of kind of the Dr. Jack. <coughs> get down to three, bring them back, bring them forward. Uh, after that, then you know, we're allowed to start negotiating with number one rank. We don't reach uh, an agreement with number two, number three. So, but there's a there's a formalized application that uh, the ad will be in the paper tomorrow, will be on the website tomorrow, and those that are interested can request uh, further details. Okay. Uh, Who will be involved right. in the actual screening process? I mean, do you have a committee, or how's that going to work? I think at least the three of us, and we're going to improve that, uh, increase that as we go. But right. at least the three of us plus others. Okay. Thank you. I had asked uh, some of the same questions, and Ray <coughs> sent me the two documents you're looking at there. Um, it's a detail, Ray. <laughs> it's actually all. How would you expect? <laughs> <coughs> Nothing less. <coughs> it's, it's, it's pretty laid out by the higher advisor. Right. right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and all the firms are used to the same types of questions that they get from most of the districts who have worked with several others to formulate this over the years. Other discussion questions? We have a motion to uh, approve the consent agenda items 9.1, 13.2. Okay. Oh, sorry. Mr. Teffer? Mrs. Bissinger? Yes. Dr. Heiss? Yes. Mr. Hamelgarn? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Froome? Yes. Uh, item 14.1, Business Advisory Committee. Uh, we have not had a meeting since the last <coughs> board meeting, but we do have one scheduled for Monday, <coughs> September 8th. 7 o'clock here. Um, welcome to attend. Uh, we're going to be talking about our health insurance renewal will be hopefully received on Friday. So we'll get some information there. Um, <coughs> investment management and obviously talking about next steps with facilities and so forth. So those are kind of the general topics. 14.2 uh, is the Forest Hills Foundation report. Um, the major issues in the foundation is a destination imagination <coughs> mini camp at Nagel on September 6 uh, for parents and students interested in finding out more about destination imagination. So uh, show up for that on September 6. The <coughs> ACT preps class is September 6 for current seniors. And the Ex Distinguished Alumni Award luncheon is scheduled for Friday, October 10th. This year's honorees are? Mike Brandy of Anderson High School in 1974. Pete Delois, a Turpin High School graduate in 1978. Stephanie, Stephanie Cohn Lang, a Turpin High School in 1987. <coughs> Michael Craycraft, Turpin High School, 1990. Uh, also being honored is Mike Hall, of course, the Anderson principal from 1985 to 2003. And uh, this year, the Distinguished Service Award will go to uh, Jeannie Millie Miller for her dedication to the Anderson Alumni Association. So um, really a great group of honorees and I uh, would encourage everybody to attend the luncheon on Friday, October 10th. <clears throat> then the finally named big event, the Soiree for <laughs> Success, will be Saturday, November 15th uh, at the home of Joe and Lorraine Marinick. Um, I understand that place is absolutely amazing, and it is limited to the thir first 300 people, so uh, registration will open soon. Um, more to come on that, but uh, if you want to go, you'll need to register promptly. And it's been waiting for this for a long time. Long time. <laughs> the soiree. <laughs> soiree. Well, the uh, word gala had been used in the past, but this is this is It's not a gala. It's not. It's a, a soiree. Yeah. <laughs> Um, 14.3, Legislative Liaison, Randy. <clears throat> uh, House Bill 487 was passed in June, <clears throat> and it contained a lot of changes for public education. Dr. Jackson referenced one of them uh, earlier this evening. Uh, that has been eclipsed in uh, its attention by House Bill 597, which is legislation that would eliminate and prohibit Ohio's use of the Common Core Standards. Um, the, uh, the, the committee that is taking testimony right now is the House Rules Committee, not the Education Committee. Uh, that's a signal that this is being fast-tracked. 
Um, what 597 <clears throat> would do is eliminate or prohibit the use of CCSS after the current school year. I want to make sure uh, there you. <laughs> I want to make sure you're. Um, not falling out of your chair when, you, of course, I know you already know most of this stuff. Um, eliminates uh, or prohibits the use of Ohio standards for science and social studies, which, by the way, are not part of the Common Core, which I think is kind of interesting. Uh, prohibits the use of park assessments. At, tell me, is it after this year or ever? I think ever. Yeah, okay. Uh, puts in place the Massachusetts standards for math, English language, arts, science, and social studies uh, for two years. That's 2015-16 uh, and 16-17. Um, new Ohio standards in the four subject areas to be developed by the State Board of Education for use beginning with 2017-18. Um, this means that today's, and I think you might have mentioned this earlier, that today's freshmen would face three different sets of standards for math, mm -hmm. English, science, and social studies uh, during their four years in high school. Um, it does, does some other things I'm not going to go into, but um, I, I mean, I, I am not a fan of anything where the federal government uh, <coughs> has control uh, of anything that's local. But on the other hand, uh, pulling out the rug out from underneath uh, schools at this point is just unfair uh, by some very rough estimates uh, including soft and hard costs, our district may have invested somewhere in the neighborhood of a million dollars uh, in, uh, again, soft and hard costs in, into getting to the, uh, taking the standards and moving them into our curriculum, which has been underway for a number of years. And to, like I say, pull the rug up from underneath us is not fair. If they're going to do this, uh, fine, <coughs> but they need to come up with a different bill that implements this in a different way and compensates school districts for uh, the work that we've invested, I say we, that our, our district has invested uh, in this so far. And uh, if any of the board members have got any comments on this, I'd be very interested to hear it. Uh, I did get a call from the OSBA uh, <coughs> legislative uh, group asking me to come and testify Wednesday on what this will, the impact of this bill to our school district. And uh, if there's uh, alignment to this, I would be willing to do that if we're not in line or I've already spoken with uh, Dr. Jackson and actually, Rick, I haven't had a chance to talk with you yet. And, and if I, you testify, would you focus on the, the financial impact? Would that primary, would be your primary focus as the financial absolutely, impact? Absolutely, because that's it's the impact of what their bill is uh, as opposed to uh, you know the, uh, the actual standards themselves. Well, I was going to say the best thing I heard tonight then was Natasha talking about our teachers um, trying to develop something that works for the <coughs> kids in our district. If these freshmen might face three different sets of standards, I think that's what we're going to need to focus on mm -hmm. and uh, do what we know to be best, and I think we're going to cover it all. Yeah. Well, yeah. I just want I mean, to share. I think, you know, all, the, all your points there, one thing that, and I brought this up with uh, other people too, is <coughs> there's no <coughs> funding <coughs> mechanism shock. Uh, uh, you know, this is a great plan. We have this great idea. There's no funding mechanism with the Common Core coming in. So this is a, a you know, this is a classic gigantic unfunded mandate. On top of the fact that having uh, freshmen un undergo three different standards, and the you know, uh, we've seen what the teachers have done a, an incredible job getting this, getting their arms around and making it as much local as they can. I mean, getting it for our kids. To, to change that again, and then potentially change it again, um, you know, I, I don't see, you know, the, you know, the, the money's easy, uh, is the easiest thing, I, uh, no, to, to rally right. against, to say, wait a minute, okay, if you have this great idea, <clears throat> put it in your bill, this is how we're going to fund it. We are going to, you know, we're going to give $2 million for every district so that they can institute this, okay, and that's not there. Well, regardless but, of what the standard is, though, it's going to be an unfunded mandate. The frustrating thing that I'm hearing is that it's a, we've gone so far down this path, and we're going to have to pull back potentially. It'll be in, interesting. In short order. It'll be interesting. I mean, Indiana is one of the states that, that <clears throat> did away with the Common Core, but the standards they have are exactly the Common Core. Right. So, you know, so it's something that gets in the paper that, oh, we have a, we, we dumped the Common Core, but then they go and, and they, they made the Indiana standards, which happened to, you know, so, so that you know, ease the transition. Yeah. Well, but that's not what this does. No, this and and that's problematic. I mean, right. this isn't about, in my opinion, whether you're for or against the Common Core. This is about just trying to provide 
some stability and continuity, something that we can count on, and, and we don't have it. It, it keeps changing the, uh, moving the cheese, right? And, and it's, I mean, we just can't plan, and worse, it's just destroying the kids. Um, I, I, I'm in favor of, of, of what you're proposing, is at least as far as your, your testimony, although I don't know that you need any of our approval. You, you speak for yourself in any event. Well, I think you summarized it very well. It's not about the Common Core. It's about what, what they're doing to us. That's, that's the problem. But uh, thank you. All right, uh, thank you. Good report. Um, there is no Saga report because Saga didn't have a meeting next month. Um, I don't remember when the next meeting is, but I know we always get an email, and I'm sure we will. Um, <clears throat> Julie, executive session. Uh, yes, pursuant to <coughs> Highlands Code Section 121.22 G1, I hereby move that the board adjourn the executive session for the purpose of considering the appointment of a public employee official. Second. Mr. Tapfer? Mrs. Bissinger? Yes. Dr. Heiss? Yes. Mr. Helmogard? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Fruman? Yes, our next regular board meeting is September 22nd, uh, 2014. <coughs> Here at 7 p.m., um, I'll see some of you at 1 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Thank you for coming.